everybody. Thank you so much for coming out to the live feed. I see that RV dog is in the van. So good to see you, my friend. I think my intro worked this time. So I'm actually kind of proud of myself for that. It'll get a little smoother as I go along. Mallory Dobbs, good to see you. Hi, now you know for sure that we are up and live. All right, I got my volume there. Excellent, Urban Cook, hello, thank you for popping in. It's great to see you. And of course, my buddy, Van Life Rocks, he actually popped up on my very first attempt at a live stream, which I just reposted yesterday. So thank you, buddy, so much for being here. I really appreciate the support. And anyone that hasn't seen his channel, it is fantastic. He's a small channel, but that man is going to have a huge channel once people find him. We got Christian Nomad. Thank you so much. This is another fellow that was here for my very first live stream. You guys are awesome. I appreciate you so much. And you've been a huge part of my learning and my growth. So today I have John Dobbs. I met John through our Facebook page that is all about ambulance conversions. I think there's about a thousand of us on that particular Facebook page and it has so much fantastic information. And John has had some amazing posts up there that I've always appreciated. And I thought, you know what? He would be a fantastic guy to ask to come up and talk because he has so much experience, you guys. It's gonna be a really great interview today. So with that, I am gonna pull John up right now. Hello, my friend, how are you? Hello, doing very well, how are you? I am fantastic, thank you, thank you, John, so much for being here, I really appreciate it. And I am so excited for everything that I'm gonna learn about today. Well, hey, it's a learning experience for everyone. I hope you can teach me some stuff and also the uh, commenters and viewers can uh, chime in as well, so. Fantastic. Um, Absolutely. Anybody that has any questions throughout the live stream, just put your question in the chat and we'll uh, we'll get John to address those for us. Absolutely. Killer Whale Channels, thank you for popping in. You're one of my newer friends. Great to see you, buddy. Um, John, I'm going to try to pull up really quick a little, um, that little quick video of your ambulance conversion now you have several different things you've converted and we'll discuss that but i'm just gonna yeah. pull this up so people get uh, just kind of like a quick view of it i just gotta shut yeah. this down while, while you're pulling that up as well i'll just kind of run through it real quick so I, my big thing was is i wanted this to kind of be a budget build and I wanted something that was kind of unique and kind of an art project. My family, we've kind of labeled ourselves as hippies for the lack of better words, but we live up in the Appalachian mountains and we go to a lot of the art scenes and flea markets and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. and reclaimed was really what we tried to shoot for and keeping budget very small, but keeping ambitions really big. That's awesome. That's the way we like to do it. Can you see this? Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, because it just covered my other screen. We're just going to run this for you guys quick. Very cool. Do you want to talk about this a little bit as it's running through? Yeah, so yeah. a lot of that stuff on the left-hand side of the screen is bottle caps, um, just kind of nailed into the wall, just as wall coverings. A lot of reclaimed wood there. Some of that wood you see there is off of like a 100-year-old barn, and there's some you know big cedar pieces and stuff like there. So it, it's kind of like a little cedar closet as well. Um, got a bunch of old tags, license plates, things like that. Um, even the flooring was kind of traded for. So everything that you see there pretty much is reclaimed. I didn't buy anything new in this, um, nothing. The only thing new was the new parts that I installed on the ambulance mechanically, but we'll get to that later. But no, for the most part, this is all just kind of a, a cool art project that was a brainchild of mine and my wife's and my daughter's. And my daughter is a artist. My wife is, she's a, a dreadlock hippie and I'm a big bearded bald guy with tattoos and just kind of artistic. So we definitely put this, this is a lot of our house as well. You can kind of see in the background here, like everything's natural mm -hmm. wood, a lot of reclaimed stuff. That's just kind of who we are as people. And we try to focus on that kind of stuff. Feels like home away from home. Fantastic. Never again, you're new to the channel or to the chat. Thanks so much. John, you must be rather close to where I live. Do you know never again? No, I don't. Um, so I'm originally from like the Chicagoland area. I moved down to Georgia 13 years ago. Um, we are up in the Appalachian Mountains. Um, but yeah, as, as far as where I'm from right now, I live uh, 
just north of Gainesville, Georgia, which is about an hour and a half north of Atlanta. Okay. Yep. So now how many different units have you converted? <laughs> um, well, I, I've done small stuff. Uh, I, I did I started out with a 1987 Toyota van, which was just kind of the brainchild of, again, me and my wife, we just wanted to go and camp a little bit. And we spent all the time up in the mountains. This is even before we moved up to the mountains several years ago. And our main focus was just kind of getting away, getting back to nature. And we wanted to do something that was, you know, would be a reason why we'd get into the van and go camp on a weekend rather than sit around the house and do nothing. So it started about five years ago with that van. And then we kind of outgrew that. We had two dogs at the time and um, outgrew that van. So we actually went into a short bus. It was an old daycare bus that uh, it was a Chevy van conversion. So it was like a 15 passenger bus. And we converted that. We did it relatively quick, again, using Reclaim and stuff like that. We only went to Lowe's twice, which is a big thing on, on a project. Um, but we camped out of that for a while, and then we actually moved up into the mountains. And so we sold that, but we still had the itch, even after moving in. And my wife, about a year ago, we started talking about, I'm like, the best platform for this would be an ambulance. And so yeah. I, I sold her the idea right away and she jumped right on board and she's like, yep, no ambulance. We got to find the right one. And I knew what I wanted. Um, being a mechanic, I, I've been in the automotive industry for 13 years. So being a mechanic, I knew what diesel engine I wanted. I knew what platform I wanted. And the search started, it took me about three and a half, four months and uh, finally landed on the right one. And I've got a cool story about that. We'll go into later. Um, I, <laughs> Do you like Slayer, Metallica, Hatebreed? Someone's interested in your music preferences. <laughs> we we yeah, want to know I, everything. There is nothing that you can keep to yourself today, John. Yeah, that's all right. No, uh, Slayer, Metallica, Hatebreed, uh, they're all on my playlist, absolutely. Um, I will say that I go uh, pretty far to the left and pretty far to the right as far as my music. Um, I'm a big bluegrass fan. I love a banjo. I love a mandolin. I love a fiddle. Um, but at the same time, I also love, and I see your thrash riff. So I, I, I have a feeling he's probably a, a thrash guitarist. So I love the thrash guitar as well. I'm, I'm kind of all over the place. I even like nineties rap, everything. I mean, everything I listen to. That's fantastic. And he says ambulances are sweet. Jiu-Jitsu 2000, you are here again. Thank you so much for coming by. You guys awesome. pop some more questions, preferably conversion related for a little bit. <laughs> yes, no, so why don't you uh, elaborate into some of this stuff for us? Because we got a lot to cover. Uh, th there's so much that I want to get from you today. Yeah, no, absolutely. So conversions, um, my big thing that I'm focused on right now is I've already kind of got the conversion I want. And I'm realizing that there's a big market. And when I say market, I just mean there's a bit, there's a lot of people that don't know about ambulances and they don't know about schoolies and they don't know about vans and things like this. And they want to convert things because they want to get back to primitive culture and they want to travel and see things. And especially in this time with COVID, you know, we've got all this extra time and we want to go do stuff that's not mm -hmm. necessarily around. People. We want to go to campsites. We want to go sleep somewhere that we've never slept under the stars before. So I, I kind of have a passion towards it. And with the mechanical side of things, I've kind of geared my thing in my profession into helping people find things, mostly automotive. You know, I help people find car parts, but mainly recently it's been, I've helped people find conversions. Um, mm -hmm. I've traveled, I'm, I'm helping several clients right now. One's finding a schoolie, one wants to find an ambulance. The other one's looking for a van. Um, we're kind of all over the place with it, but I, I have a passion for conversion and I enjoy the conversion process and I enjoy the people, everybody that's on here now, I enjoy the people that it yeah. brings together. And there's a big community right now with the ambulance and schoolies and it, people are wanting to do this. So it's exciting for me to see it because I've been part of it for years before it was cool. And I think it's really awesome to see the following that it's getting yeah. out. And a lot of positive people like yourself that are spreading great information. So when you started into this lifestyle, were there people that questioned your sanity? Uh, there's still people that question my sanity. <laughs> That's probably regardless, <laughs> though. I, that wasn't even a fair question, was it, John? <laughs> <laughs> no, they definitely. I mean, it's it's always a mix of um, some people find it really, really cool. Some people find it really, really off the wall. And somewhere in between here I am. And it's 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 kind of the new normal, you know, people are doing different things. People are, 
I, I look at all the houses that you walk into now and I look at all the conversions and people are getting back to that rustic wood. People are getting back to that old rusty tin. People want to see something done differently because we've seen stuff done the same for so many years mm -hmm. that it's really, really cool to see uh, people doing stuff odd. Well, you know, I'm, I'm a homeowner, sticks and bricks, right? But I, I want to travel. I want to be safe. I, I just, I, I feel like the whole van life thing. When I came across that, it was like an answer to my prayers. Yeah. Um, Mallory Dobbs, we actually had to live out of our short bus after Hurricane Irma for a week. Yes. Tell me about that. I, I, so we were renting at the time. It was like our last year in this house, and Hurricane Irma blew in, and it blew all the trees on top of the house. And um, we didn't have anywhere to live because our landlord was not taking care of stuff. It was very kind of a sketchy, just a sketchy agreement with the landlord. And so we said, you know what? We'll just park the short bus out in the front yard. And we survived Hurricane Irma in that short bus. We were parked out in the front yard after the first tree fell, the first blast of storms before the eye was even over us. So we pulled the short bus out in the middle of the front yard. And we lived in that ambulance or excuse me, we lived in that short bus for a week and a half, like eight or nine days. Um, we only went inside to shower. Like that was the only thing we did. And it was just, uh, Crazy. it was a humbling experience and it kind of let us know that this is what we wanted to do. Cause we were really, really close to that whole eight days. Like we were all out of work. We were all out of school because the disaster was so huge in Georgia mm -hmm. with Hurricane Irma that we lived out of that thing. And we hung out in that thing in our front yard for eight days. And that's some of my fondest memories. And I think that's some of my daughter and my wife's fondest memories as well. I'm sure that's why she, uh, brought it up. Well, you know, and it, it just brings you back to family values, the closeness, being away from so many things that distract us. And it was it was somewhere that you could be safe too, right? Um, uh, hello, RT dude. Hello, my friend. Asked if I could actually drop your link. And unfortunately, John is not a creator yet. Let's change his mind, guys. This guy should have a YouTube channel. No. Yes. <laughs> I'll tell you, I'm I'm kind of spastic in the way I do things. And like, I'll get a wild hair. Sometimes I'll be out in the driveway until 9 30, 10 o'clock at night. And I'm just working with my wife sitting there squatting underneath something, holding a flashlight oh. while I'm working on stuff. So I, that's a good woman. Oh, the best. I can mm -hmm. tell you that right now. She's my paint. She's my paint and prep person. She does all the stuff that we do on the ambulances times 10. She's better at carpentry than I am for sure. <laughs> 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 so no, we, we make a great team um, for sure. I, I wouldn't be able to do any of this without my wife and my daughter for sure. And their Aww. support because I, I have hairbrained ideas and I do a lot of stuff that's unconventional and they roll with it. It's fun. That's awesome. Family support is so key. I know for myself, there was the odd person that kind of went, Hmm. And especially for me, cause I wasn't someone they would have ever pictured doing this cause they had a different image in right. their mind of someone doing band life. But my family has been so supportive. When I had a breakdown, I had my mom with me. We were on a road trip. And I was like, that's it. I'm selling it. Like, I just had a little girl fit. And she's like, no, this is your dream. Don't just let one little thing get in the way. So, I mean, I am so blessed with the support that I have. Yes. Well, that Hey, and, and honestly, I think that's what makes... Uh, out of all this is if it doesn't bring people together and it doesn't bring the the family unit together, why are you doing it? You know, it, it, if, if it's only making a little bit happy and it's just stressful, there's no point in doing it. But if it's all fun and fluid, that's, that's what it needs to be. And it feels organic most of the time. That's awesome. She's like, you're the best buddy. Yeah, Hell, <laughs> Hell Archie dude said, film that. Like <laughs> that makes perfect sense. Fair, you're already fair. doing this. She's already holding the flashlight attach yeah. a camera right. to it off your phone we'll talk about and it keep, keep the footage for if you ever change your mind well we'll definitely i think that we are probably going to do something we have a large project coming up um over the next probably two or three years so um i don't know if i want to spill the beans on that yet okay you keep it under wraps i'll keep it under wraps for a little well all right actually i'll go ahead and say it long story short we have six acres up in the mountains and Appalachian are, Mountains, correct? Yes. I'm learning my geography. Mountains. Yes, absolutely. Southern Appalachian Mountains. Um, and we've got a big hill, and that big hill is like perfect for a guest house. And we've been talking about a guest house. We've been talking about tree houses. We've been talking about a bunch of stuff. So I think the plan is at this point is to uh, buy an old retired city bus and convert that city bus into a guest house slash when my daughter gets to be old enough, uh, we are going to probably have that be her house so that that way she has uh. her 18, That's 19 fantastic. Year old 
Yeah. You heard it first here, guys. Okay. <laughs> that Vita travels live stream. Yeah. No, and a, uh, a lot of family doesn't even know that. I don't think so. <laughs> don't tell them. Make them watch this. <laughs> yeah, they're watching. They're watching. Another fellow here. He says you have the personality for it for sure. You. Thank you, my yeah. friend. When you do, I want to be one of the first people to know if you do start some videos or a channel or anything. Cool. I mean, even if you had personal videos and you posted it to our ambulance page, right. the stuff that could help. I mean, one of the reasons I was so drawn to asking you to come on the channel is some of the hurdles that you came across. Did you want to... We, did you want to share that with us when you went to look for an ambulance? Things that other people like me need to be aware of? There's... And, and there's a lot. I mean, we, we'll probably spend most of the time talking about this now that we've kind of got a good introduction to each other. I There's a lot of things to look for in an ambulance. And I guess that's one of the most common questions that I have people ask is, oh, man, where do I start? You know, what do I, you know, oh, crap. And I, I'll tell people there's three things that you need to start with. And this is just three things to even breach yourself into the mindset. What do you want? What do you need? And what's your budget? But how and do you know what you need when, because trust me, you right. start this and you have no idea how much you really do have to learn. Yep. Like, okay, keep going. Sorry. No, no, you're, you're right. And, and that's a fair, that's a fair question. A hundred percent. That's a fair question. Um, the big thing is you have to find out why do you want this? Why do you want an ambulance? Why do you want, what, what's your main goal of doing this? Is it something, a fun project that you want to make money off of? Is it something you want to flip? Is it something you want to camp out of? Is it something you want to live out of? Those are all things that you're going to ask questions because somebody that's living out of their van and somebody or ambulance or schoolie or whatever is mm -hmm. not necessarily going to need the same things as people that are just chilling in their ambulance. They're just okay. going camping it on the weekends. So you kind of have to revert to what do you have to have when it boils down to it? So if, if you are living in it, you know, you got to have a shower unless you want to stop at every single truck stop between, you know, wherever you're camping or whatever, or go to a campground that has that all the time. Um, yeah. Also the power regulations, you know, you've got to, if you're living in it, you've got to have enough power to keep food cold, or you've got to come up with good, you know, cool, cold food storage. Well, and so, temperature regulation, I know was a really big issue. And insulation. I mean, mm -hmm. it's a big difference staying overnight and staying in it long term and moisture, mildew, things like that. I mean, there's there's a lot of different. And that's why I say there's a lot of different aspects. But you have to come into what do you need and what do you want? And I'll just tell you from my experience, I've just wanted something. We've got an awesome house. I love our house. We live on a little farm. So I'm not living in an ambulance anytime soon. I'm not living in a school bus anytime soon. My main goal right now is to on the weekends, we kayak all the time. We mountain bike. We nice. hike. We go all over the place. That's why we moved up here. So then we don't have to travel to our all of our favorite spots. Mm -hmm. So we didn't need a shower. We didn't need a toilet. We didn't need all this kind of stuff. We just really wanted a place that we can hop into, change out of our swimming suits, crash for the night, and kind of have a rolling tent. So I didn't worry about small things like, you know, oh, I don't need solar. I'm fine. I'm going to go to most campgrounds or I can run a generator or I can use shore power, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I didn't worry about things like a rooftop AC. So there's a lot of things, but that's, and we could go into all the different aspects of what you need, what you want, et cetera, et cetera. But it boils down to personal preference. If you have high ambitions, you better have a high budget. And I don't say that on like a salesman term or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I mean that heart to heart. If you have high ambitions where it's like, I need a toilet, I need a shower, I want a you know, so full solar system, I want to live off grid for two years. Those are huge ambitions. Go for it. That's awesome. But there better be a budget that backs that up. I hear a lot of, and I, I have a lot of people come to me and they say, hey man, I'm looking for this. I've got about six grand. I found this ambulance and I want to do this, 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 and this to it. It's doable, a hundred percent, but at what sustainability? You know, okay. can, you, can you be sustainable for six months out on the road, or do you just need to be sustainable for a week out on the road? Yeah, that's a very big difference. Yeah, and I think the budget is a big difference as well. I, I think, and that's why what you need, what you want, what's your budget? Mm -hmm. That those three things really need to be talked about, and they need to be kind of established before. Um, before you jump into it, because mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of and you can anywhere you go on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist, 
you see a lot of people that have started these builds, ran out of money, ran out of time, ran out of ambition, and they realized I'm in over my head. I did not plan this through. And I've talked to probably 10 or 15 people in the searches for the ambulances I've been looking for for myself and my clients that some people start this and they don't have the means to finish it. And I don't ever want to start a conversation with somebody and give them false ambitions that, hey, this is going to be cheap every time. Like, oh, mm -hmm. you can do $5,000. It's no problem. There's some people that can. And that's awesome. You're resourceful. Great. But if you aren't willing to put in 100 hours worth of build time or 200 hours worth of build time and a couple thousand dollars, it may not be the best route. But Go for There's it. a quick question there. Sorry. Um, do you guys know my friend Red Trucker? So that's Paul Barger, correct? Have you ever met him, John? No. He has sure a haven't. step van. It's uh he's got a step van conversion. Bread truck. Oh, bread truck. Yeah. You'll have to check that out yet. He's pretty I big. know there are I know there's a couple guys I, I have followed in the past that are bread truck guys, but I don't think I've ever heard I don't think I've ever heard of him. Mm -hmm. How about this one? How about a wind generator off the side to charge your batteries when you drive? I, mean, I charge awesome. off my alternator when I'm driving, and when I'm parked, it's solar. Wind, yeah. I don't know. How would that work? Um, I, I mean, if, if you if you are an engineer and know how to do those things, electrical is definitely my, um, I wouldn't say weak point, but it's eh, at best. Yeah. So I, if you can do a wind generator, that's awesome. I think that would be fantastic. The only question I have is, is if you're not driving and you're just parked for a couple of weeks, you know, you don't have any wind, you don't have any power, but yeah, no, going down the road, that's a great idea for wind generation for sure. But at the same time, your alternator is already running. It can already be charging without spending that additional money. And that's right? also, so I'll, I'll go into that real quick about the ambulances. That's one of the reasons why I think that ambulances are one of the best platforms. Okay. Um, is, is the charging system and the electrical system of ambulances. Um, that was one, that was the main reason. And I'll, that was number one or number two on my list as far as why an ambulance is the best platform to use was it's got a serious inverter from the factory. Most of them do. Um, and then they also have an insane alternator, a, an, an alternator that provides as much amps as a welder does. I mean, you can almost weld with an uh, alternator off of an ambulance. Um, I didn't know that. The yeah. power I have. It's huge. I mean, even if you get under the hood, the reason why most ambulances don't have the little cover that says 7.3 liter diesel or 6.0 liter diesel is because the alternator is too large and it won't allow for the space. Well, my batteries aren't even underneath my hood. Yeah. Mine yeah. are off to the side in a drawer that I pull in and out. And then I have you the back space. That I, I have a... Demers. Okay. Demers, Demers. We have one uh, ambu that ambulance company in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. But okay. Yeah, so it's right beside my uh, exterior door on the side of my house. Right. I open a door. I slide it out. I've got two batteries there, so that's connected to my engine, and then yeah. I have another connection that would go to the house batteries that I added in, and they charge off the alternator on that with that switch. That's awesome. So how many batteries do you have in total? You have four? Four. Awesome. Very cool. But I don't run any, I don't have the solar connected with the front cab batteries. The solar is only on my house batteries. I don't want to mess with anything involving the engine. Right? right. Starting. Yeah. Accidentally run it dry. Yeah. 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 And, and that's really the only thing that really hurts you, quote unquote, on ambulances is if you get any sort of broken wires or anything like that, you get what's called a parasitic drain. And a lot of times when they cut out things like sirens, when they cut out things like uh, the lights and things like that, they just leave them open-ended. And I found that a lot on my ambulance. Um, and I had to run several wires to stop that parasitic drain because I was getting parasitic. You know, I'd sit for three or four hours and my battery voltage would be cut in half. And if it was sitting overnight or too, too long, it wouldn't start at all the next morning. Okay. Hey, Badge, so. how you doing? Good to see you camping is clammy. Thanks for coming by and showing your support for the channel. Greatly appreciated. Those are both two Canadian YouTubers. Very cool. Very cool. That are in the van life scene. I mean, it's always been very popular in the States, but our West Coast, particularly in Canada, has a lot of people are living the van life dream, but a lot of them, it's at a necessity. 
Yeah. Like there's no housing options. It's too expensive. So it's really good to learn how not to lose your money, what scams to look out for. And yeah, yeah. what, what is it that you actually want out of it? What is your budget? And then take it from there. Right. Yep. No. And, and as far as scams go, so I'll just run over with you guys real quick. What happened to me very recently, this happened last week. Um, so one of the clients I'm working with, great lady, like I said, she's turned into a friend. She's absolutely, this has been one of the biggest things for her. We've been working together for about two months now, helping her find a van. I went and looked at several for her that just didn't work out. And mm -hmm. so I kind of turned her on to ambulances. We started talking about ambulances and she found a really, really nice one. And it was in Pennsylvania, uh, Philadelphia area. And so how far is that from you? Uh, sorry, again, hours. geography. Yeah, about Pardon? 11 hours. So you're looking at one that's going to take you 11 hours. Is that straight driving? Straight get, driving. Yeah. Okay. 11 hours. It was like 704 miles. I think it was. Okay. So we talked about it. I told her, I said, if it, if you think that this is a good one, I it had a brawn box on it. It was a really nice ambulance. It was a 7.3 liter diesel with only a hundred thousand miles. I said, you know what? That's probably worth it. I said, we just need to have a conversation with the owner. Um, I wanted to look, you know, ask about things like rust, how it runs, how it drives maintenance records, et cetera, et cetera. And so I had a long talk with the owner of this ambulance and the original poster of the ambulance. Um, we talked for probably an hour the Friday before the Monday that I left. Okay. And I asked him all those questions. He said, man, this is a gem. This is a perfect ambulance. This is what you want, what you need. It's ready for an adventure. And I told him, I says, I'm coming from Georgia. I'm going to be helping her convert this thing. We're going to be working together on this. And I said, I need to be able to drop off my rental car when I get to Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And I need to be able to drive it back to Georgia. Oh, no problem. This thing's a gem. It may have a, you know, may need some breaks just from sitting, blah, blah, blah. I said, okay, well, it's worth going to look at. So we had more conversations. We've stayed in touch for a little while, Saturday, Sunday. And finally, my client said, hey, I do want you to go look at this and let's plan for it. So I, we planned on it. I said, this is going to be a good one for you. And so I hopped in the car, made the 11 hour drive and halfway through the drive, I kind of got a weird feeling because I got a text from the owner of the uh, ambulance. And he said, Hey, I've got three other people coming today. What time are you going to be here? And I said, just, just that same particular day that you're going after driving 11 hours. Correct. Yeah. I was halfway there. Okay. I, was in Virginia, I was in Virginia at the time. So I was, I, I was well on halfway through the drive. Mm -hmm. And I, so I said, I said, Hey man, I, I'm coming from Georgia. You know, you knew I was coming from Georgia. I've given I, I, Sunday and Saturday. I give them ETAs. I said, I'm leaving at this time in the morning. I'll be to you at this time between two 30 and three o'clock. So I gave him a half an hour window and I was there at two 45. Um, so <laughs> anyway, he, I, I pretty much told him, I said, I'm driving from Georgia. Don't show this. Don't sell this until I get there. So already started off a little bit rocky. Um, and when I pulled up it, we were in West Philadelphia and I was expecting to see a large ambulance yard. This was like full of semis and a whole bunch of other stuff. And he did own an EMS business, but there was other stuff parked in here. So the first thing I see when I pull up is the ambulance with the hood popped. Anytime you go look at a car, a hood popped is never a good thing when you pull up. So, so this is 11 hours of driving. You're tired. You're already worried this guy's sounding a little sketchy. And the hood's up when you get there. Yeah. Oh, my stomach actually feels sick hearing that. Oh, yeah. But I, I'm a positive person. So I, I walk in everything. If you put <laughs> negative in anything, you're going to get a negative it, no matter what. So I walk up and hey. I'm like, hey, man, what's going on? The hood's up. I was like, it must be that good. You're ready to show me the motor. And he said, no, no, no. The batteries were dead. This thing's been sitting for a little while. The batteries were dead. I'm, I'm actually having somebody come out. And I'm going to have them put in batteries right now for it. I said, oh, okay, great. So while we're talking, we're probably talking for two or three minutes. The guy was with a battery, parts guy with the batteries pulling in and they start putting in the batteries and talking with me and him. And so I said, well, let's just look around the ambulance. So we took a look around the ambulance, normal stuff, you know, scratches, scrapes, little tear here, that, you know, nothing major. And I told him, I says, it really does look like a good ambulance. We continued to talk. We looked at the electrical system. We looked at the motor. We looked at underneath the car, see if there was any leaks. I was pretty impressed with it. Um, mm -hmm. So he and I were having, I said, you know, is there anything about maintenance records? Can I see the maintenance records? Which that's a must, guys. Maintenance records on ambulances, whether you buy it from a fire department, whether you buy it from an EMS company, whether you buy it from private, whoever, they usually have maintenance records. Try to get them. Um, so we Next went through time. maintenance records, showed me where ACs and all this kind of stuff. And about 20 minutes in the conversation, he goes, oh, oh, so I'd been there for almost 30 minutes. And he goes, oh, oh, I forgot to tell you, when I pulled it out this morning after I jumped it, um, 
the transmission was a little slippy. So I, I kind of looked at him. I says, are you sure it wasn't low on fluid? And he says, no, no. He said it's, it did the same thing Friday. And he said, I made sure that the fluid was okay. Let me but run then that how did you have the problem with the batteries if you had it running on Friday as well? I mean, this is just getting worse and worse. Well, think, think about this. So we had that problem with the transmission on Friday, the same day that he and I had a conversation about how good it ran and knowing that I was coming from Georgia. And, oh. 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 So I, at that point, I'm, I'm, again, remaining optimistic. Maybe it's just low on fluid. So I told him, I said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this thing for a drive, see how slippy it is, and then I'm going to go to the parts store and get some fluid and see if maybe I can top the fluid off. And he says, oh, yeah, that's fine. Gave me directions to the parts store. So the batteries get put in about 10 minutes. So I'm there for 45 minutes to 50 minutes, roughly. And so I start shutting all the doors. Ambulance cranks up. It's sitting there idling. I says, I'm going to just shut all the doors so I'm ready to go take this thing on a test drive. So I hop in the driver's seat and he runs out. No, 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 no. You can't drive this thing. Why? I said, I'm sorry. And he says, no, no, you can't drive this. The transmission's like falling out of this thing. So I, and then on top of that, he said, it doesn't have insurance. It doesn't have um, a tag on it. doesn't have anything. I, no registration. You can't drive this thing. And I'm like, man, how am I supposed to buy something, especially for a client, put my name behind it, if I can't even drive it? So long story short, it ended with him driving me around his parking lot, which was 100 foot by 100 foot. And the transmission slipping in that distance. That's how bad the transmission was. Oh, my God. Even I would catch that. Holy. Right. right. And it, it was a $4,000 transmission or excuse me, a $4,000 ambulance. So we even tried to work with a guy. I said, hey, man, it's going to be at least 2000 to 2400 You know, what can you work with? I came here looking at a $4,000 ambulance that you said was adventure ready and road ready and a gem. So he says, well, let me talk to my partner. They came back and said 3,800 was what they would do. So I said, man, I, I'm sorry, I can't do that. What about 25? So we were even still trying to work it out. Um, and it, he, he laughed at 2,500. And that was a, really a gift because if I would have bought that vehicle, I would have had to take it to a transmission shop, wait three or four days in the transmission shop to get that thing installed and then drive it back home to Georgia. So we're and you don't even minutes. know at that point what else is wrong with it because you can't, can't do anything it. yet. Can't even drive it. Oh, by Did the we, way, we, awesome guest interview says, hello, artsy dude. Thanks, buddy. And uh, we got parent associate advocate here. She's actually Canadian as well. Thanks so much for coming out. Very cool. Thank Sorry, you, guys. Keep going. I just no, wanted no. to. Oh, this people do find this so interesting. So you better do your channel. But yeah, anyways. Sure. <laughs> so I. I, I <laughs> I was, I was definitely hurt. Not, not for myself. I honestly, I enjoyed the drive up there. I enjoy meeting new people and I was really hoping this worked out. Um, I was more, I hated it for the buyer because she had so much emotionally invested in this. She wanted this thing and the, the body was cool. It was a cool brawn that had a recessed door. And like, I was super jazzed about it because it was a nice unit, Yeah, but shady seller. And sometimes I, I want to warn people like, I've noticed it a lot more recent, and I don't know if it's because of the turmoil. I don't know if it's because the market's flooded, et cetera, et cetera. But there's a lot more dishonest people out there, and especially selling vehicles. It's a crapshoot. And the one thing I can tell you guys, make sure that you have it inspected. If you don't know what you're doing as far as looking at mechanical aspects of things, it is a, I would say it's a requirement in your budget to hire. So how would, how much would that cost to get a, an ex inspection done? Um, well, if I do it local, if I do it within a hundred miles, um, I charge anywhere from 150 to 200 and I'm low. I know I'm low. I know I could charge more and I don't really want to because I enjoy doing this. I enjoy meeting people. But if it's, for instance, I'm an hour and a half, two hours away from Atlanta. If I go into Atlanta, 150 bucks is fine. It's, it's a fun day for me. My daughter and my wife go with me. We look at a vehicle, we meet new people and it's fun. So now you're you're gonna have to excuse my ignorance. It just comes to me naturally. But what? It's lack of education, I suppose. Um, what, no, 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 no. Like, what kind of things are you looking at when you do that inspection? Because I mean, not everything can be known. So, like, what kind of things can you kind of check off the boxes for? 
first thing I look for is undercarriage. You can tell a lot about a vehicle by what's underneath it. Um, okay. Oil leaks, transmission leaks, differential leaks. You can look at gaskets. You can look at where they've got their oil change. If they run a good oil filter on it. You can tell a lot by the underside of the vehicle. You can see all the tires. You can see all the exhausts. You can see the backside of most of the brakes. You can see a lot underneath the vehicle. So the first thing I do, I lay down on the ground, poke my head underneath it. And I can usually tell if it's even worth going to the next step, um, whether what I see underneath the vehicle. You know what that reminds me? I'm going to just give me a second here. I'm going to show one more little thing that you gave me a video clip of and just kind of ask you about that. So give me one second. I think I'm going to get a little quicker at this as we go. Oh, well done. Well done. You know more than Are me. Are we getting there? Are we getting there? Okay, wait. Can you see oh, cool. anything? Oh, wait. all right. You're going to hit. Okay. What is this dripping? Uh, that's you rain. I was doing this in the rain. Oh, but what were you showing us here? That nice shiny piece on the muffler? So um, one of my big things on this ambulance that I did is I actually uh, beefed up the exhaust system on it quite a bit. Um, so that's okay. a four inch straight pipe straight from the turbo. Um, that's increased my fuel mileage quite a bit. It's definitely made it louder, but um, increased fuel mileage. I also did some turbo upgrades, did some air filter upgrades, um, fuel system upgrades. So uh, my big thing is, is I wanted something that I could get 14 to 16 miles per gallon in. Um, I'm right about there. I'm close. Okay. Someone definitely thinks you guys are amazing. It's like finding a unicorn. Oh, uh, thank you. An ambulance is built pretty tough. They are, they are, aren't they? Stout. I mean, rollover rated. They have to be crash test rated from the factory. Um, yeah. It, it, huge. The stoutness. And not only that, the, the suspension components are bigger the body mounts are bigger. The axles are bigger. I mean, you've got the biggest rear end. You've got the biggest Ford diesel motor that they offered. You've got the beefiest transmissions, which sometimes can be kind of weak. Um, but okay. I mean, they really do over-engineer everything on those things just to be safe, longevity, et cetera, et cetera. Do you want to read this one? Ah, my wife. I may be biased, but this guy treats every inspection as if it's something his family would be driving. He's extremely mm. detailed, the most honest person out there. I, I my head, is it is it growing? <laughs> well, no, no, but if you're building a reputation on this, right, right, you you make a bad choice or or something, your name is mud. Yeah, and I I'm very I'm very tight. Like I'm a tightwad. I don't like spending money. I don't like spending money on stuff that I like. I don't, I don't like spending money. Um, <laughs> and I especially don't like seeing people overpay for something. Mm -hmm. And I was in the automotive industry for, I ran a shop for eight years. I've been in the automotive industry for 13. Um, I ran a shop and it was a, advertised as a very honest shop, but there was very dishonest tactics. And oh. if I wouldn't, if I wouldn't sell it to my wife, if I wouldn't do it on my wife's car, if I wouldn't do it on my car, it's not something I'm going to recommend to a customer. And it's the exact same thing when it boils down to my inspections and looking at vans, looking at ambulances, looking at schoolies. If it's not something that I would invest in, I'm not going to tell anybody to invest in it either. Mm -hmm. Another biased opinion. He knows his stuff, but he will always be very humble. See, and because you are humble, mm. she's got to point that out. And you know what, though? We can feel that. Like, your vibes are coming it. through right now, buddy. Like, I would, I feel like I would be comfortable having you help me with these kinds of things. Because at my end of the picture, I don't know anything mechanical. Right. Right? So, yep. the stuff that you're sharing with everyone is so incredibly valuable. I appreciate and that. I, and I, I honestly, like, I, I want education. That's that's the biggest thing is because the automotive world is scary. I mean, walking into the automotive, uh, an automotive shop as a man is scary. Walking in as, you know, somebody that is completely ignorant to something is scary. It's tough. So it's, it is, it's tough. And especially when you're talking about coming off of some serious cash for stuff. I mean, I see some builds out there, guys. You guys are killing it. I mean, you guys are coming off some serious cash, 15, 16, 17, $20,000 on these builds on these ambulances and awesome. It, it, they all look great, but I, 
if you're going to invest that type of money, you better make sure that platform is perfect. Yeah. I mean, me, my, my build with including my solar, I'm at about $1,500. And you know what? That's about as high as it's going to get unless I absolutely have to like maybe add some more batteries, but that's, that's it. I got what I need. Right. Yeah. It's, it, and, you know, it's, and, and that comes down to budget. You know, everybody that, everybody that gets into this, you know, the, some of those van life guys, and I follow a lot of those guys, they'll pick up a mm -hmm. rusty old piece of crap van and they'll turn it into something cool over the course of a year. And they're like, Hey, I've only got $2,000 into it. Um, it's awesome. Hey, good question. Do you pull a trailer with your ambulance? Um, I'm, I am, and I'm going to, I am a little bit nervous about it though. Um, the main reason I don't, I'm a little bit nervous about pulling a trailer is I can't see it. So I'm definitely going to have to get some rear camera that I can watch the ball or watch the trailer or watch something because ambulance is so wide, can't see behind it. So I am a little bit nervous about pulling a small trailer. Well, I understand the stay back 10 meters now that I have one. And that last tree that I met, it did not stay 10 meters away from me, <laughs> right? Backing into a campsite, when, you know, my first trip with it, I tapped, tapped it, but still happened nonetheless. Right. Although if you're pulling a trailer, that's putting distance between the next vehicles and you, you'll at least see maybe those vehicles. Right. Now, I, the, I guess the main reason I, I've driven tow trucks and stuff like that in the past I have to see the load behind me because I'm mm -hmm. constantly mirror to mirror. So it's uh, um, it's going to be a challenge. I'm going to have to do something. I even thought about putting flags on the trailer. So then that way I know where corners are and stuff like that. So uh, great question. A ambulance and trailer, it can be done. I'm a little bit nervous about it, but yeah, definitely can be done. Well, and I plated mine and I mean, our insurance and stuff works a little bit different here, but they asked me if I wanted to insure it for another five thousand pounds and i again brand new like why would i want to do that well if you're toying anything i'm like oh no i don't have a hitch i'm all good <laughs> i guess it was an assumption of the size of the vehicle huh yeah i i don't know states never really ask us anything about weight or any i mean i know that if it's over twenty six thousand and one pound um you have to have a cdl that's a special license to drive it but as far as insurance purposes i don't think they ask us anything as far as that goes here, I put another note here. Yes. Um, so she's she's reminding me of good things. So we talked about the transmissions and, and all that kind of stuff. I will say that that's probably the weak link in the ambulances is the transmissions. And it's something to watch because 100,000 miles is definitely life expense, expectancy for a transmission. Um, if you okay. wanna, If you want to keep an automatic, keeping them cool, keeping them serviced and not abusing them are the big things you're going to want to do. I'm swapping mine out to a five speed. Um, I had a, and you're doing truck. that yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Um, so I actually, I sent you that link and I don't know, you may not have it up, but um, I sent you that link I'm doing. I found an old dump truck, like an old Ford dump truck that had a manual transmission. So I stole all of the stuff off of it. And when I say stole, I bought all the stuff out of it, but yeah, I went to the junkyard know. Went to the junkyard, cut it up, and uh, I got the transmission, got the drive shaft, um, got the pedals for the clutches and things like that. So um, that's really my big thing. I don't know of any uh, anybody else that's done a five-speed conversion on an ambulance. If you're out there, I want to talk to you because um, I definitely think we're going to be a rare breed. But five-speed, the ZF5 Ford transmission that came in those years, um, which mine's in 1996, um, it's a five-speed beefy manual transmission. So I, that's, I'm excited to do that. That's this fall project. So my automatic's hanging on, but just by a thread. I'm going to pull up the stuff, the picture sent me. So this is your ambulance. Yeah. 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 That's us up on the Blue Ridge Parkway. We were, uh, we were heading back from like the Asheville area. Um, that's, so that's North Carolina. That's kind of the Northern part of our mountains. We're in the Southern part of those mountains, Blue Ridge. Okay. Um, now, just for anyone that doesn't know, one of the things I really appreciate these is that is an oxygen door yeah. right in behind the driver's side. So it's vented already. You know, it's probably going to have a little less vibration, I imagine, than if it was in the back end. So I think that that would be a great place personally for storing my propane tank. I don't know. Is that something that you've looked at? Um, I'm not going to do propane. I cook over wood fires too much, and we're also vegetarians. So... With the vegetarian aspect of things, we don't really require much grilling or cooking or things like that. 
and anything that we do need, it can just be a, you know, a twin eyed Bunsen burner type stove. Okay. I know there was something else in here and I keep popping all over the place. I better not do this actually because okay. I have other people's messages that are popping up in there. I don't want to. No, all don't good, all good. We don't need to dwell on that, but I, I, I do want to revisit the automatic transmissions. If you are looking at it, that's one of the big things that you really have to look for is how it operates. Overdrive is very, very weak in the ambulances just because there's a lot of weight. I mean, those are okay. the exact same transmissions that they put in the F-250s, F-350s, but it's constantly hauling. I mean, I know mine drives like 11,000 pounds. So I would say automatic transmissions are the weak link in the ambulances. And if you if it's got 150,000 miles and it hasn't had a transmission in it, it's only a matter of time. Okay. A little bit off the mechanical, but what kind of bed setup did you do? Like I've right, tried so, three different variations in mine yeah. and I'm still not happy. Yeah. And that's why I didn't do anything permanent. Uh, I, I stressed about it and stressed about it and stressed about it. And I just wanted to make sure that my daughter had somewhere to crash that was like built for her. So that little picture that I showed when you went in and it, there's a little bench right there where the normal dry storage would be. Yeah. Um, I turned that into just kind of a little deeper bed for her, which is like a little, I guess it's a full size bed. Um, and then we've got this huge beanbag chair that is like one of those love sack beanbag chairs. It's like eight feet long and six feet wide. And we just throw that thing on the ground. Me and my wife put a uh, sheet over it and we crash on the beanbag chair at night. So again, primitive, but we can take it out of the ambulance and it doesn't live there. It doesn't take up any floor space. If we don't, if we just are going kayaking for the day, we really just don't have to bring it. We can just mm -hmm. throw it out back. No big deal. There's no bed. So honestly, I, Bed wise, I've done it several ways. And the best way I've ever done it is nothing permanent because it just gets in your way. Yeah, mine. I haven't done anything permanent either. Um, so, uh, hello, RT dudes asking Has anybody that has a YouTube channel ever done a van tour of your ambulance? No. I would no, love I to be the one ever. to do it, but I'm in Canada. <laughs> no, no I, I, and anybody that is in this area or is traveling through this area, please stop by. Um, I mean, we are, we live up on top of a mountain and we've got a bunch of vehicles and we're always doing stuff and we're hiking, ki kayak and camping. So first of all, I'd love to show you some spots. If you're in my mountains, please, please come. I'll buy you a beer. Um, <laughs> but I, I would love for somebody to come out and, and do something with it. We, uh, I, I'd like to do it after the five speed swap because I'm going to do a five speed oh, swap yeah. and do an interior swap. Um, mm -hmm. so after that, which should be after the first of the year, let's roll. Did that dump truck have an 871 blower on it? I'm no, not sure. sure didn't. Okay. Heat kills autos. Yes, absolutely. Period. And that's why I, I did say, I, I hope keep them cool. You got to make sure that there is a cooler somewhere. I mean, there's big transmission coolers. I think if I were to keep my automatic, the big thing I would do is I would have a bigger transmission pan deeper so that it would hold maybe three or four more quarts. I'd have a big transmission cooler. Um, and then I would also um, probably run an inline filter as well and just beef up that torque converter big time. Um, mm -hmm. But in my opinion, to build these automatics sturdy, it's a $3,500 process. You can do it cheap. And there is, they'll last you 50,000 miles. But if you want 150 to 250,000 miles out of something and you're going to be using it up in the mountains and things like that, you'd need to spend the extra money on the components that matter. Okay. Hello, RT dude. Take a virtual live. I would absolutely love to, but I'm in Canada and I can't cross the border because it's closed down thanks to COVID. Yeah. All right, Wanderlust, thank you for popping in. Um, all right, Wanderlust, if anyone doesn't know, created my new banner that I have. I went on his channel. He did it live. He did it fast and better than I could have imagined. So thank you so much, bud. Oh. Uh... No, I, and I, I guess the big thing is with anything, guys, I want to go back to the budget. I want to go back to the budget thing because okay. budget is one of those things that I also get asked about often is, man, I, what budget should I have? What should, uh, if I'm spending $6,000, I've got $6,000 to spend. The best thing I can tell you is, is it doable? A hundred percent. 
it, it, a $6,000 budget is not outside of the realm of things. There's going to be creature comforts you don't have for $6,000. And if your budget, let's say, is $6,000, the last thing you should do is go find a van or an ambulance or a schoolie or whatever it is. Don't go spend $6,000 on that unit. You need to spend $5,000, $4,000, $3,000 because, again, whatever you want and need is going to eat into your budget. So if you want a shower and you want gray tanks and you want this and, and all that kind of stuff, either you're going to have to get really, really creative or you're going to have to come out of pocket. Um, and not to say that it can't be done. I've done a lot of things. I will, uh, I'll, I'll say in my ambulance right now with performance upgrades, with the purchase of it, with all of the little bit of conversion that I've done and the five speed, I think I've got $3,500 into my entire ambulance, maybe 4,000, maybe 4,000. But I would say it's probably closer to 35. Um, wow. I I love budget builds. And honestly, I'm one of those guys that I'm not scared to get my hands dirty. I love jumping into stuff. And I like doing stuff and walking away from it and going, oh, I got 3,500 bucks in this. This is awesome. I don't care what happens to it. You know, like, and all of our builds, I, I'm working on a truck right now that's easily a $12,000 truck. And I've got 1,800 bucks in it. So there are deals to be had. Now, that being said, I got to tell the story of how I got my ambulance because I did lead off with that at the beginning of the interview. So I have to. Oh, yeah. Sorry. So the (laughs) it's a really funny story and it's an awesome story. So the guy that posted this ambulance when I first started looking, which was in November um, of last year, 2019 was when I started looking for the ambulance. And, And seriously, like if I find one, I'm buying it. So this was one of the first ones I saw. This is one of the first ones I messaged. And the guy wanted like 6,000 bucks for it, which probably a fair price for it. And so he and I kind of talked back and forth. I asked him a bunch of questions about it. I said, hey, if you're ever wanting to get rid of it, let me know. You know, Mm -hmm. if if you're just desperate for money, you're sick and tired of looking at it in your driveway, just let me know. He said, okay, no problem. I really didn't expect to hear back from him, but I'm all about planting seeds with relationships. I love planting seeds and watching whatever happens. And sometimes yeah. the people that I plant seeds with, nothing happens, but most of the time they do. Um, so I planted that seed with him and I messaged him about a month later. And it kind of, he said, oh, you again? And so it kind of turned into this game where he, I was bugging him every Friday. So every Friday for like six months, me and this guy were talking. And it was it, it, finally he says, I don't I don't look at Messenger too much. Just text me on my personal cell phone. And it just turned into a game. And honestly, like it got to a point where I probably wasn't going to buy this ambulance. But it was fun talking to this guy because we were like joking around and having a good time. Yeah. So finally, I remember saying, hey, man, here's what I'm going to offer you. Take it or leave it. And he's like, no, not going to take it. But he says, I tell you what. He said, why don't you come up? I, I live on a horse farm. Your wife's a horse person because at this point we had kind of personally got to know know each other as well. We said, why don't you guys come up to the farm and just look at this thing and see if it's even in your realm of wanting it? I said, all right, cool. So we pull up. We have a great two and a half hour conversation. I drive the ambulance and I noticed that there was a little bit of a transmission issue. Okay. And I was a little bit discouraged about it. I drove away from it. But like he and I and my wife and his wife and all four of us had this uh, like awesome connection. And so I called him back. We left the place. I called him back 45 minutes down the road. Um, and I said, Mark, what do you want for this ambulance? And he's like, gave me the price. And I said, all right, I'm coming back. Fine. So I, dro- I pulled, turned around. We spent another hour there chatting with him and mm-hmm. told me the ambulance, I put transmission fluid in it. And it's lasted me this long, but it, it, like I said, it's, it's creeping, but it started this cool relationship with me and Mark and his wife and his wife was going through a lot of stuff. She's out of it now. She was going through a cancer treatment and like, we kind of went like, and I don't want to say we went through that together, but like I I asked every time, Hey man, how's your wife? Everything going well with the family. And like, we're friends on Facebook. Now we have, we had plans to go see him this summer in the ambulance, but with the whole COVID thing, we didn't end up going, but like we've stayed in touch. He sees what's going on with the ambulance. He appreciates where went to and et cetera, et cetera. And it started this huge and cultivated this huge crop that was that just based on a little planting seed and me bothering mm-hmm. him. Every but that that's wow. the story of how I got the ambulance. And it, it honestly means more. The ambulance means more to me just because of that story and how I got it and how I built it and family yeah. time. 
that if you don't enjoy the process of this whole thing and you aren't looking forward to the process of this whole thing, you're missing out. Mm -hmm. It's so much fun. It is so much fun talking to people like you. It's so much fun talking to, you know, my clients that are looking for stuff and excited about stuff. Cause I kind of get to live vicariously. I'm not buying a conversion anytime soon. I'm not converting anything until I get the, the city bus on top of my hill, but yeah, it's fun to do it. And I really enjoy the conversion industry. I enjoy the people I meet along the way and it's just fun. It's a great time. And if, if you are stressed about this process or worried about this process to the point where it's not even worth doing it, then don't do it. If it impedes on your inner peace and your inner happiness, don't do it, but yeah. keep it clear, keep it fun make it, make it happen. I mean, it, it's a, it's a great process to do. And I encourage anybody that wants to do it, to do it. It is a yeah. blast. Well, I know with Vita, it's like, um, she's my second child. You know, I, I made sure I got <laughs> the nice curtains for my baby and, and I'm cheap. Like, let me tell you, these curtains cost more than the ones in my house. Like that's just a simple little thing, but what I have done in here is not maybe the best craftsmanship, but I did it it's and it work. worked and I am so proud of it. Right. Like it's, you know, I can see why um, vehicles tend to be men's divorce projects. Have you ever come across that? <laughs> this yeah. is my empty nesting project. It yeah. works. I completely understand that whole psychological element to the joy that you get from doing this. Yes. And, and it's awesome. It, it, and, and I'm not saying you are, but you said you are. You said you're ignorant to this whole thing and you don't know the first thing about vehicles and the fact that in your ignorance, you can see and have fun with this. It's That's exciting to me as a gearhead. I, I am a diesel guru. I love stuff that goes fast. I love stuff that's loud. I love stuff that's big. I love big mud tires. I mean, I like it all. And it's cool to see people getting into the car scene that's not necessarily the car scene. So, mm -hmm. and I can tell you it's accepted. All the guys in the car scene love this stuff. They think it's just cool that people are doing different stuff with cars. And van life's been around for years. I mean, the 70s, 60s, people living out of vans, out of you know, in Woodstock and places like that. I mean, that was the time. And I think a lot of people are reverting to that. Man, it makes me so happy to hear that there's people like you getting into this because it's a positive breath of fresh. It's a breath of fresh air. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I think it's fantastic. No, we hit the hour mark. Are you comfortable? sharing more with us or we can chat I mean, if, if people are watching and, and people want to hear i'd be more than happy to talk yeah you guys if you have some questions john i am so blessed to have you here and i kind of don't want to let you go already <laughs> right because this is so great and i still had to chat with you for like a half an hour before we started this i just can't yeah. get enough of the knowledge that you have in there right well I, I, I appreciate that. I, 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 I do. And I, I'm going to tell you, I learn more from people. I, I learn more from people than anything else. I, I'm definitely a people person and I love absorbing knowledge. I mean, mm -hmm. and I want to touch on just what you said with the curtains. That's another thing I really like about the ambulance and about those small spaces. Is you can upgrade like you can because you've only got to buy like two curtains so yep. you can buy nice curtains <laughs> you yep. know like that's and that's a fun pro that's cool as well in that process it's like hmm you know i didn't need a lot of this reclaimed barn wood and that's why i used it i was like man i don't really want to use this because this is hundred year old stuff and this is a good piece of cedar but i'm like i only have to use you know yeah like 20 yeah. 27 square feet of it so i might as well and well, you know, and that takes the fear out of a lot of the conversion for me to uh, do I do anything in my house myself? No, because I'm right. It's everything's at a bigger scale. And if I screw it up, it's going to cost me a lot more. Here's a smaller scale. If I make a mistake, well, it's in my budget. I can fix it. Right. Absolutely. No. And, you know, I, I think the hardest part is, is starting. You and I kind of touched on that a little bit before we uh, went live. Mm hmm the starting process when to say hey i'm jumping into this both feet i'm i'm committed to this that's the hardest part of this everything else seems to happen very organically especially if you're having fun with it it happens yeah. very fluid you know like oh that goes there and, and sometimes like i found i planned because i again i spent almost six months looking for an ambulance and i spent that time blueprinting as soon as the ambulance got here and i started on it that blueprint went out the window 
I, I didn't think that anything I thought I was going to do. Nothing. <laughs> oh, I love the honesty, but that's how it goes, right? It did. And I mean, I spent, you can ask my wife. I mean, I still have notebooks where like I sketched out, here's what I'm going to do here. And here's what I'm going to do here. And as soon as it got here, I looked at it and go, I'm not doing any of that. Like it's just not even close to what I was thinking. <laughs> and it worked out better. And, and I think with this ambulance project, I, I went into it. I mean, I was all in. As soon as it got in the driveway, I started on it. And I started kind of stressing about stuff that didn't matter. You know, like, oh, what what wall covering am I going to use? Oh, I got to figure out this. And as soon as I said, you know what? I'm going to use what I know. And I'm going to use weird stuff like bottle caps, like antique license plates, like, you know, reclaimed I wood. Love it. That As soon as I started doing that, I was like, okay, it feels like home. And now every time that me and my wife and my daughter go out anywhere. We feel like we're at home. Even the dogs, like they don't really change your behavior because it looks like our house. It smells like our house. It's our house. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah, fantastic. Step vans. Step vans. Um it depends. What what do you mean by step vans? I do have a question about that. What what do you mean by step vans? Hello RT dude. Did you want to pop up if I drop a link? Yeah, he's asking good questions. I'd like to have a conversation. That would be fantastic. I just got to figure now, how do I drop a link into the chat? He's got another comment here. If you want to take a look at that. Mm -hmm. What 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 you're making model is your van? Hello, Artsy Dude. I'm pretty sure you use StreamYard. Not sure, but if you do, I dropped you a link. You can come up on stage here if you wouldn't mind. That would be amazing. It, and it would like make things easier because of the time lag between where we are seeing each other and where YouTube is seeing us. Right. So we'll just see if he comes up. But uh, yeah. Everything learned so far, people sharing procedures on YouTube. Did you ever have to check out YouTube for any of the stuff you've done? Or most you built on what you already knew? Or I watch YouTube just kind of uh, leisurely and kind of uh, more casually. I, I, I get a lot of great ideas from YouTube, and I can search real quick, and I, I do get a lot of great ideas from YouTube. I don't really follow hey. anybody specifically. Yo! Howdy. What's up? Doing all right. Uh, I got, I just recently bought a step van. It's an old Mac tools truck. Oh, sweet. With a, um, with a lift gate on it, you know? Yep. It's a, uh, 2002, uh, MT 45. Okay. Cummins diesel Allison transmission. Is that the five nine Cummins? Uh, it's, uh, yeah, I believe five nine. Yeah. 20, five nine. Yeah. Big, big motor. 24. Yeah. Guys. No. You you've got the you've got the setup. I'll tell you as far as uh, as far as motor and transmission setup, you that's the dream team, man. I got to come and sitting out in the driveway, and I love it, love it. Yeah, it's got two hundred thousand miles on it, and uh, I've been making videos of of doing like oil changes. You know, like I I'm not really a mechanic, but I'm, I'm mostly learned on YouTube University. You know, no, uh, hey, man. But I've been doing uh kind of trying to share what I've been learning. You know, sweet. But, well, yeah. as far as what 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 do you what do you need to know about step vans? Because I I mean I oh I'm I know just, macro trucks I know those snap on trucks I probably paid for one of them. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have no idea how much uh, uh, the actual thing cost whenever it was brand new, like what they would have charged to yeah. build. No, they're they're high dollar. I know that, especially with that engine and transmission. But I mean, yeah. are you doing insulation and everything in it? Well, I just tore down like all of the pegboard and been looking. I, I just made a video exposing what's behind the pegboard and uh, I want to do some insulation, but budget, you know, is definitely uh, I'm going to have to budget to do that later. It has like the, the factory insulation, you know, but I want to upgrade it someday. How much space is there in between the uh, framing and the pegboard? Um, it's probably about three, four inches. Maybe they have a whole huge, uh, I don't, uh, wooden frame behind the pegboard, you know, with, um, 24 inch gaps between the, the bore, you know, the, um, support beams. 
it's a it's a pretty solid wooden frame like it's it's probably like seven ply you know no kidding yeah it's real sturdy but uh it's real heavy too but uh yeah i don't know i was just asking that question mostly on there just because i'm just seeing just picking brain on step band stuff i'm new to that i'm new yeah. to it i belong to a, a couple different uh facebook groups on step bands you know but well, as, as far as mechanically goes, I mean, I know those I know those trucks pretty inside and out. And I mean, anything you need to know or need parts for, hit me up. That's my, oh, that's my name. Look me up on Facebook, add me. Oh, cool. I would, uh, honestly. Yeah, man, you can would, also get a hold of him through me too. But yeah, you're pretty easy to find on Facebook. Okay. And the ambulance page as well. Yes, absolutely. No, all the ambulance pages as well. I would say the big thing on those step vans just like the schoolies, I think they're probably under insulated. Um, yeah. And I think that's probably the first thing if you're going to do anything. And I, I, I'll go back to this too. Two things that I always tell people, if you're going to spend money on something and you really want to spend money on something, flooring and insulation, your fl the box, make yeah. sure that flooring is good flooring because you will not want to rip everything up and do it again if it starts to scuff. So spend the money on flooring. And insulation. You're not going to want to rip everything off the walls if one <laughs> in the summertime you can't keep your AC in. No, I'm I'm in Texas, man. It's hot. <laughs> yeah. No. Hey, man. Are you okay with a hurricane? Oh, uh, I'm uh, I'm up in East Texas. It, we'll probably get a little split splash of rain, you know. But yeah, I'm not down south where it's real bad. Yeah. Man, it's it's coming. I can tell you, Georgia feels like a rainforest today. It's crazy. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I was looking at getting some of that Havelock uh, insulation, but I think I'm just gonna do with what is good right now. Just uh, put some boarding up on it. Uh, I'm I'm pretty tough. I can throw on some wool blankets and stay warm. You know, <laughs> fairly yes. good. I live. I live. Yeah, in no, a, I'm the same way. I I think the only thing is I can't sleep hot. Oh yeah. I yeah. Can, I can put a fan on and be all right, but uh. I lived in a van for three years while apprenticing tattooing with no electricity, no water, nothing. So that's yep. a ain't no problem. No. I'm just older and I need to be able to stand up now. <laughs> mm -hmm. you, that's one of the reasons I liked an ambulance. Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't do the ambulance because I'm taller than the ambulance, you know. But I did see a um, four by four video. Somebody did a walkthrough of a four by four ambulance um, that was actually had six and a half foot clearance inside yep. recently on youtube i don't remember oh. the, i don't remember the channel i was trying to find it for you but uh i know a lot of the medium duty ambulances i think they go up to like six two six four some of them are yeah, six foot for a state um, park um it was an emer like a standby vehicle that n never really got used and it, it was right. sat like 10 years you know and they had to they had to get rid of it after 10 years they have like a certain mileage or a certain amount of years, and uh, some guy got it like super low miles, like forty thousand miles. Wow! Uh, but it's a four by four and big, real big inside. So yeah, like oh no, they it, most of those medium duties are insane. I mean, they're huge on the inside. I before I bought mine, I uh, drove a forty five hundred Kodiak, and that was just. It was a monster. I didn't. I honestly didn't even want to drive it. It wasn't fun to drive. It was bulky. It was rattly. Sometimes the bigger you get, the worse it rides. But man, I'd love to have a four by four. Love. Yeah. I don't know if it could turn a, a step van into four by four or not. Mine's uh, mine's pretty heavy. All them, all them boys down in Texas. I'm sure they can run big tires on something. Oh yeah, yeah. But I mean, switching it <laughs> over to four by four actual conversion, you know, big tires is one thing, but doing yeah. That, Hello, Archie, dude. I well, want to hey, thank man, you so you much you for ever... your support. Oh, oh yeah. sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, John. Oh, no, I was just going to say, if, man, if you ever find yourself up this way in Georgia, please, Southern hospitality is real. Open door yeah. policy. Anybody, please come on. I've lived in many places, but uh, before I turn 50, I plan on doing an Appalachian Trail. Uh, so maybe I'll hop in your backyard someday and, and crash out. <laughs> That's Man, Appalachian awesome. Trail is just a hop, skip, and a jump away. Oh, that's cool. Well, we, I, I, I look for you on Facebook. You said John Dobbs. On you got it, man. Well, you know what? Hello, Archie, dude. I, I listed you as a moderator on my channel here. So when I drop you back down, if you want to drop your link in the chat, then uh, he can find you, too. All right. Yeah. I, 
you can see my own un knowledge mechanical skills trying to do a oil change. <laughs> I had, oh, to you're too hella, funny. I had to make it hella artsy because that's all I really knew. But so is this private? So this private chat nobody else sees, correct? I don't know. This private is, chat. Is the private chat nobody else sees. This chat that we're having right now, we're still live. Okay. No, I'm. I'm. I, all right. I sent it anyway. So there's a private chat icon. I was just going to send you my phone number. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You could do that. Yeah. Sorry, this is a little. Oh, okay. private chat. So you have it up there. That's private for us. Do you see that? No. If you go up by comments, or no, private chat. So one, two, three. The fourth thing on the right down it says private chat, and this should yeah. have a little symbol on it. Okay. Click okay. that. Cool. I got. It. I'm gonna uh, actually just screenshotted it. Oh, great. Cool. Sweet, man. Sweet. Yeah, give me a call anytime. I, I mean it. If you ever have a question, if you're under the hood at 10 o'clock at night and you've got a weird question, shoot me a text. I'll try to get to you. All right. Sounds cool. Thank have, you so have, much. Yeah, thank you. Awesome uh, awesome having a live chat with you as well, Van Vita. Thanks. We'll talk to you again. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. See you, man. I love that. That guy is so hey. super supportive. We got some more people that popped in. We have a... Uh, Camping Therapy, Jimmy Ray the King, Van Life Rocks is still hanging out with us. And I cannot pronounce his name, Rakup. I'm not sure if that's correct. And I don't know, John, if you caught this comment when I posted it earlier. I'm loving this oh, guest. Yes. So knowledgeable. His wife is so supportive. Congratulations on this outstanding live stream series. Thank you. And you oh, know what? It's people like John that makes this worthwhile. Like, I get to ask you everything I want to ask you, right? Face to face. It's fantastic. Yep. Well, and, and I guess I've, I've kind of rambled enough. If anybody has, if you, if you have any questions, please, I'm, I'm very, very open to questions. I'd love to answer the tough questions. And if you guys think of questions afterwards, feel free to reach out to me anyway. I I'm, I'm pretty active on the ambulance page and stuff. Again, I'm passionate about this stuff. I like seeing what you guys are doing. And I really get inspired by the stuff that everybody's doing. So if anybody has questions, please ask now or reach out to me. I'll be happy to answer. Yeah, if somebody wants to pop a question in there or if um, if you happen to have a stream yard and you want to grab that link, I'm just going to keep it available for another couple of minutes here if you're interested. Sure. Um, we, when we talked before we started, you said you had a couple points based on our messaging. Was there anything else that you – we're going to possibly cover. You know, I, I again, I, I think I, I just want to hit again. Like if you guys are thinking about doing this, if there's anybody that or or that has already bought the vehicle and are just, you know, like, ah, oh, man, I, do, I don't know what to do with it. Just start. It just go for it. Dive into it. Make sure your budget is right. But if it's one of those things where your budget isn't right and you can't do it right then, save up for a couple months and you can do it then. It doesn't all have to be. um it doesn't all have to be very, very uh, serious. And I, I guess that's why as soon as I told you that I I kind of lost my inhibitions and just kind of crumpled up the blueprints and started hammering bottle caps on the walls and reclaimed wood and all that kind of stuff, that's when I started having fun with it. And yeah, it, it was fun because I, I took it not too seriously. I made it into an art project. I made it something weird. And every, every time somebody walked, they're like, why did you paint that purple? Because I wanted it to be purple. Like it just, it's cool. Purple. I, I don't know. It's different. So, and I, I, I did the schoolie build and the schoolie build was really cool, but it was very cookie cutter. It was what I had seen on YouTube. It had, it was exactly the way that I designed it and wanted it. And it happened just, and it was terrible. It was almost unusable because it wasn't functional. It wasn't anything. And that was mm. a learning experience for me. And again, I'll go back to it. If you get something in there that doesn't feel right and it impedes your happiness, you know, like if you don't like the way your bed is designed, live with it for a little while and then rip it out and do it again. Enjoy it. If you don't enjoy it, what's the point of having it? Um, I've got a quick thing here. Why am I in timeout? I have absolutely no idea, um, camping therapy, but your comment is here. So um, maybe get in touch with me separately after and I can ask one of my mods or maybe one of my moderators can send me a, a private chat. It could be an oops. I don't think I bumped anything. 
either way. Sorry about that. If you have a question, absolutely post it. Um, badge, everyone needs one, says, now that Jamie Damon's van build is in Georgia, are you thinking about going? Are you familiar with that? No, I guess I'm not. I, I have to admit, guys, I'm really closed off. And like, I the reason why I don't use YouTube and things like this, we just got internet in our mountains, or at least at my house, four months ago. I just got internet. I just got TV. Like, I had barely any cell service. So, like, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty remote, and I like it that way. This is really mm. the first time I've been interviewed live and the first time that I've done anything on YouTube with my face on it. So, uh, I don't do this type of thing. I'm just kind of a simple guy, and I just kind of stick to myself and do that. You know, like, I keep it quiet, and I, I don't really pay attention to what's going on other than what my friends post in the ambulance groups, and I've made a lot of good friends in the ambulance groups. And those are the stuff I pay attention to is the other people that are doing something cool. So I, I, I blinders are kind of on sometimes. Yeah, it's uh, it's there's some pretty good groups with really great information. Here's a question for you. Camping therapy asks Stanley uh, 1200 a peak jump starter power station with a 500 watt inverter. Is that any good or is it too weak? Like, um, is that enough to jump a ambulance? Most ambulances need almost two vehicles, don't they? Yeah, I mean. I think that's probably a little bit low. Um, that's another something I would pay good money for is a good inverter. Um, I don't really, I, I would always suggest somebody keep a big jump box, like go to an automotive store and buy a big jump box. And the main reason for that is they don't really go dead. They're easy to charge and they've got enough juice to crank a diesel. So uh, um, as far as jump boxes go, go that route. As far as inverters go, keep that separate, buy a bulky inverter. And um, I, I think 500 watts is a little small, in my opinion. It depends on, again, if you're just charging phones and running a laptop off of it, you're fine. But anything over that, I probably wouldn't say too much. Okay. And uh, Van Life Rocks um, is a little more familiar with some of this stuff, camping therapy. And he said it probably was my Stream Elements bot thing that I just newly set up so i'm sorry my friend that it did that to you and it stopped your one comment i i'm brand new trying to figure out all this stuff and i thought okay this is gonna be one of those fabulous tech things and apparently it's not as fabulous as i would have hoped <laughs> so my no, apologies but it's gone really good this has gone super good i i i'm impressed with the quality of it i mean this has been very easy and very easy to see comments and add somebody to a video chat this is a pretty cool platform yeah, you know, if there's some other people that, uh, well, it's mostly creators, right, that are familiar with the StreamYard if they do live streams. If there's someone else that wants to pop up, I think uh, if you don't pop up by 6.30, we'll probably wrap it up if the questions go slower. But yeah. I'm loving this, John. I thank, thank you. you so much. And like, there's been a lot of feedback in the chat today about how great this is. And I've had great people that I've interviewed so far, but you've got a really good response. Well, hey, I appreciate that. And I, I've, I've got to thank you for having me on. I mean, this is um, exposure I wouldn't have otherwise if you wouldn't have invited me. And um, not only that, I, like I said, I'm all about the people. So this is really, really cool to meet new people and chat with artsy dude that I had never met before. And yeah, got a brother in the it's South another seed. Another seed, right? Exactly. All about planting seeds for sure. I saw a question uh, down there about boondocking. You're not you're not going to be boondocking oh. just overnight. Um, that's fine. I mean, it's, it, it, again, if you're just wanting to charge up something or have enough power overnight, that's probably just a fine enough inverter, no problem. Um, I always say go a little bit bigger on the inverter than smaller. But again, if you're just doing it very small instances, one or two nights here and there, don't worry about it. That's probably good enough. That'll charge a cell phone for sure. Well, I think the thing is, like you were saying before, what are your long range plans and your budget? So if you know that you're going to want to use, you're going to want to run a little bit of bigger stuff, maybe spend the money right away on a little bit of a bigger inverter. Like yeah. I actually have a 3000 watt inverter in here. Not that my batteries can come anywhere close to handling that, but also budget wise, it really wasn't that much more than a lot of these small ones. And yeah. then my shore power, I got to get a little bit of help fixing it, but then I can run anything through, yep. through that, through the inverter and, and I'm, I'm laughing. Yep. Yeah. No, the, the shore power on ambulance is super nice. And mine actually, I, uh, I have an E1 box and it has an E1 charging system in it. 
So if I'm camp, if I'm sitting at a, uh, a campsite, not only am I charging my batteries, I'm also running off a good shore power as well. So the next morning when I wake up, when I'm plugged in, I have full batteries. I have, you know, I had power all during the night, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, I like mine. I, I'm very happy with my shore power. And truthfully, that's what I use 90% of the time. Okay. But then again, that's knowing what your needs are going to be. Yep. Right? Absolutely. Um, Badge asks, when you build the ambos, do you guys, uh, do, do, like, do you use all the wiring or do you start over with your own wiring? Like, what did you do with the electrical in your ambulance? Because that is extremely intimidating. Left it alone. Me too. <laughs> it's uh man there's, there's so much of it i and uh, i'm again self-admitted i am not an electrician by any means mm -hmm. um, but that was uh that was one thing that was humbling i looked behind some of those panels and i'm like well i don't know what to do there and my next door neighbor that's right like right down the road from me he's an electrician and he came up one night and he popped it open and he goes yeah, man, that's uh, I don't understand all that. So when an electrician looks at me and kind of like, whoa, I don't know about that. I, I kind of pumped the brakes on it. I didn't want to reinvent the wheel on it. It again, worked perfectly fine for mine. More power to anybody that wants to rip into the electrical system of an AMBO because it's intimidating. Yeah. Um, Camping Therapy said he bought a 200 watt and tried to run a small jigsaw tonight and it wouldn't power it. So he's going to return that one. So what would you suggest if, for example, a jigsaw, what would that even use for wattage and amp? I think if you're trying to use power tools on a 500 watt, you're going to run into issues. Um, that's that's way too low a wattage to power anything that requires constant demand like that. Um, especially if a jig, I mean, if you're just running a jigsaw in your hand, it probably would do fine. But if you're running jig through a jigsaw through a good piece of oak, you're going to burn up that jigsaw. That is not enough, not enough wattage. Um, I think at that point, um, Power tools are a whole different thing because that's that's a lot of power, a, a lot of resistance on that too. So I don't I don't know that I'd run power tools off an inverter unless it was like a three thousand like you have. Yeah, I, I used my drill off of it in here one time when I was trying to do something. It didn't have a bunch of extension cords where I was. So because yeah. I do, I have very limited tools, but I do carry what I have with me because I learned the hard way. Like when my solar panel came loose. And I had to rip it all apart. Boy, was I glad I had everything with me that I needed to do it, except for a ladder. Did yep. you? Do, how do you get to the top of your ambulance? Uh, I stand on the tire, then I stand on the fender, and then I stand on the roof and hop on top. Okay, yeah, <laughs> and my boy can do that, but I can't pull myself up there. Jeez, you guys. No, that I suggests moving all the old wiring. And you know, for myself, I will probably do that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, uh, I'm, I, I'm definitely roof rack is in the future. I want to make a big platform roof rack. Main reason because kayak hauling is very, very difficult. I tried to do a gutter system roof rack. Didn't feel real comfortable about it. So I don't, uh, I, I don't know that I, I don't know. I don't know about a roof. I know guys have done it with a gutter system. I don't think I would do it if, as far as hauling any weight more than maybe a kayak up there. And I've got three and then possibly a canoe soon. So I don't want to, I, I don't want to overload the roof at all. And especially the gutters. So a ladder and a big roof rack system is probably going to the way I go. Drilling into the ambulance is scary to me though. So I haven't done that yet. I drilled into my roof to secure my solar panels. I didn't bother getting anything to clamp to the rain gutters on the side. Cause I'm like, I'm going to have to probably pay someone to modify it anyways. Right. So it took everything I had to drill into that roof. Like I just, oh, I was so scared. I did it and I'm glad that I did, but there's no flipping way I'm putting my roof fan in there myself to cut in there. No, it, it's, putting it's scary. It, it is even, even for me, like I know I can fix it, but like I'm nervous about leaks. I'm nervous about longevity of, you know, the silicone. And, and if you get water up in there, there's so much electrical that's in those ceilings. It just scares me. I'm, I'm nervous mm -hmm. about it. I know it can be done, and I, when I do it, I'll uh, I'll go to the extent of making sure it's done correctly. But it, it is a scary process. Absolutely, yeah. We got one more comment. You know, it's funny. We see each other first time, like first on Streamyard, and then later on YouTube. But on the YouTube side, the questions pop up before it shows here for me to bring it up. Oh, okay. <laughs> so Bash says, "Good to see you, John." Um, and awesome show kiddo. Thanks badge. Badge is actually going to be on my show on Friday and he's Canadian and he has a creator channel and he's a mechanic as well. 
Sweet. Awesome. So, yeah, you yeah. know, if you're going to check out another in. channel, yeah, you guys could probably connect that way too. Yep. Um, I, uh, oh, I won't dog anybody, but I, I love, love the 7.3 liter diesels. If anybody is looking for an Ambo 7.3 liter, in my opinion, is holy grail. I have seen a couple of the Dodge Cummins for some reason in the ambulance groups. I've seen two of the Cummins Dodge ambulance bodies. Um, which I'd love to have. That's kind of the holy grail for me. But seven threes, I'm not going to take anything away from you six zero owners. Do your thing with six point zeros. Just be prepared if they break, they're expensive. Yeah, and that's fantastic information for anyone that hasn't bought an ambulance yet because I did not know that. No. Um, where did this go? Here, I got another question here. So how much on the average are used ambulances? Now you guys are going to discuss it in USD. In American currency, right? Yeah. yeah. So as far as American currency, um, you can find cheap ones. There's no doubt about it. Like, um, I mean, you can find $3,000, $3,500, but they've usually got just pff, miles on them. Um, and they, I, I don't know that I trust them. Okay. Uh, I think in the States, I'm seeing 4000 to 6000 as being a good starting point. Um, are they problem free? No. Um, you know, they may need brakes or, you know, they may have a little dent here, dings there. There's some really, really nice ambulances in the $10,000 range too. So uh, depending on how much work you're willing to put in, depending on, you know, if your budget allows you to do repairs, the big thing with budget is again, if you're spending $10,000, if your budget is $10,000 said and done, you guys are in this thing, living in it, camping in it, whatever. You don't want to spend $10,000 on an ambulance. You want to spend about six thousand dollars on an ambulance, so you've got you know fifteen hundred dollars for repairs and twenty five hundred dollars for your conversion, or vice versa, whatever. So uh -huh. I think, as far as what I'm seeing, um, average five thousand to ten thousand for a good one. Yeah, a badge is a character. What you see is what you get, and that's why I love him so much. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think you would really enjoy his channel too. He's he's a pretty good guy, and I'm hopefully gonna actually see him in person sometime soon here this fall. So, because we are we're close to the same drive as you were for that ambulance that didn't pan out <laughs> about yeah. that part. part. <laughs> oh, that was yeah. terrible. So, did you have to front that expense for that trip all the way out there and back? Um, I mean, yeah, there was expenses for the trip. Absolutely. Um, again, I was contracted, so it was kind of a hired thing to how do. How does that work? Like, do you have a business and how do you define it then? Um, so for I'm a someone broker. that's looking for you. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. So I, I am a broker. I, uh, I got away from the automotive industry kind of at the right time, right. As soon as COVID was kind of hitting, I went into my, um, own business. I I've owned my own business now for eight months. Um, and I'm just kind of the local lad. That's I, if, if somebody needs a motor, I get them a motor. If they need that motor put in, I make sure that motor's put in. If they need uh, a car, I make sure that car is available to them. I do the research. I go out there and look at it. I do all of the haggling, negotiating. And then I call them and say, Hey, the car you wanted is this price at this location. I, you want me to buy it, et cetera. Um, and it's just kind of evolved into with my, experience with converting that a lot of conversion people have reached out to me in groups and said, Hey, is this good? Is this good? Hey. So people are starting to say, Hey, I need you to go look at this ambulance. Hey, I need you to go look at this van. Hey, I need you to go look at this schoolie. Hey, what do you think of this school? Um, so it's kind of expanded off of that where now I'm brokering and living vicariously as well through people that are just starting this journey. They're just now starting to look at a van. I went and looked at a van yesterday for a client. Um, I was going to go, Monday and go up to Ohio, which is another mm -hmm. 10 and a half hour drive and go look at a school bus, one of the shorter, larger ones. So um, it's just kind of evolved into a business, but I'm that guy that it, I'm a broker. If you are looking for something, whether it's oddball, whether it's a fast car, whether it's motors, whether it's transmissions, whether it's automotive help, anything automotive, I'm that guy. Mm hmm. It, we are very small town, rural community. And so I kind of, I get my reputation locally from the guys, you know, like we, there's an old farmer that lives up the road and he and I sit there and he gives me leads about, Oh, I've, there's a car over here for sale, that sort of thing. And so it just kind of evolves. And now I get at least 10 calls a day. Hey man, I'm wow. looking at you, you help me. So, and it all comes back. I just, I want to help people. I, I don't want to have, I remember how stressed I was buying a house 
because I didn't know anything about buying a house. Mm -hmm. I didn't know the legality. I didn't know the paperwork. I didn't know the cost. I didn't know this, that, and the other. I had no idea. And yeah. I thought about that in terms of, man, this must be really, really stressful for people to buy cars. Their second biggest investment of their life. So, and then working in the automotive field, I realized how stressful it was when somebody's car quits running. And they uh -huh. don't know. So my goal is to take the stress out of purchasing. My goal is to take the stress out of repairing. I don't want people to be stressed about buying something. I want them to just go, like the lady that I went up to Philadelphia for, even though, yes, it was terrible that the thing didn't pan out. She was sitting at home with her kids and she had a mechanic that was out on the road working for her. Mm -hmm. Hello, Jalea and Martin. Um, you got to read this one. This just supports what I was telling you at the beginning of the show. Yes, I know. You do. And you know what? If you don't want to do the YouTube, let me talk to your wife. We'll get her to videotape. You just send it to me and I'll put it on my channel then. It's do you probably, know how famous you, know, you can make me? I, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you though, like, and I guess the main reason is is because I'm I am an oddball, and like when I'm at home, this is my this is my place. And so when I go work out, I'm I've got a PBR, Paps Blue Ribbon in hand. I'm shirtless most of the time, and <laughs> I'm wearing like rope hippie sandals or Birkenstocks, laying underneath of a diesel truck, swearing. So <laughs> I don't know who wants to watch that or not, but that's kind of the way <laughs> that's kind of the way it works. <laughs> Well, it depends on the audience, but um, I guess. <laughs> your wife might have a certain thing she'd be very interested in. But I think even if you weren't <laughs> even in it so much, um, just filming what you're doing, like what's even from your your perspective of what's going on or just even sit and explain a situation like you put some really good posts out on there on our Facebook page. And, right. you know, sometimes if you can make a little video out of that, like run a five minute heads up. Here's something, you know, I came across. Or I guess the next best thing is every time you come across something you want to share with people, let me know. We'll have you come yeah. back up on the show. Yeah, no, and I, I'd love to start again. We're planting seeds. We're we're doing a partnership here. I, I, if you ever have a specific question and you have the reoccurring question and you need somebody to pop on for five or ten minutes at a time, I'm happy to do that and answer questions. And if anybody wants to have me back, I'd be happy to come back. As far as starting my own YouTube channel, I am, I am a very. Um, mental guy like everything mm -hmm. is in my head i am kind of artistic in that way i guess you can say is like i see things but i don't necessarily know how other people would see them and i don't necessarily know how to explain that to other people so it's um i probably should start a youtube channel and i'm sure my wife looking at the uh look at her comment it's done why well, i i, I, I random <laughs> random random just prepare for random nonsense mixed in with some great tech talk yeah and you know that's what makes a great channel but you know what that's good to know now that you're set up a stream yard too if you're watching you know one of my lives and you want to pop in i can pull you right up like we did with hella artsy dude and i think that works really well rather than worrying about the leg and the chat yeah you know, I want this to be as interactive as we can. I just, I think it was really great when, you know, the two of you guys were up here talking. That was, I, I saw a lot of beauty in that happening, right? No, absolutely. And I, and again, I love, I love meeting people. I'm a people person. I never meet a stranger and I could talk to the devil. So it doesn't bother <laughs> me a bit. I, I, I would love to meet new people and especially in this lifestyle. I mean, this has been a great opportunity and it's very humbling um, to know that people are interested in what I'm doing, because I think what's going on in my life right now is really awesome. And, um, I'm kind of private about it and I don't share it very much, but, um, I've got a lot of stuff going on right now. I mean, I've, um, five vehicles out in the driveway. I, I do budget builds all the time. I try to do as much as I can, as far as, you know, tech talk and like make posts about timing belts and how to do this. And like, just because I want my family to know it. I want my friends to know it. I want the people that are close to me to know it, but um, I guess I never knew that anybody else cared to know it. So I, I appreciate that. And it's very humbling to me that uh, people care about what I'm doing and think it's cool. Mm -hmm. No, I think it's great. And I just feel so blessed that you came up on here today. I mean, honestly, we had more people coming in watching this as it was going on, right? Like, and like, we're still sitting at 15 people watching this and this is a brand new channel for live streaming, right? So right. 
even some that have have more subs they they don't get this many people hanging in there for an hour and 40 minutes like you have good information and like badge said you're saying you aren't gonna do you chat youtube channel he's like well that's what i said too yeah. <laughs> and then no, someone actually know. set it up for him but it's no, all I, good. And I, I, I enjoy doing what i'm doing and, and most of the time like i'll tell you some of the time I'm just sitting, I'm sitting watching TV or I just woke up in the morning or whatever. And I'm eating breakfast and I'm like, well, I'm going to go outside and change transmission fluid. And like, it's just, <laughs> it's, it's kind of what I do now. And like, everything is a pro everything's fun. Like I, I enjoy everything that I'm doing and I vehicles, lawnmowers and everything. I mean, I, I, I love anything with a motor and I'm extremely gear headish. I, I mean, I'm never mm -hmm. into classic hot rods. That's not my thing. I like oddball stuff. I'm a big Toyota fan. Like I, I'm, I'm kind of nerdy when it comes to that kind of stuff. So I, I dive into something that I'm passionate about. So if you want to know anything about a Toyota Tundra, got you there too. Um, <laughs> but, but like anything that I'm passionate about, I research and I do diligent, diligent research sometime endlessly. And I'm sure my wife will comment on that as well. Uh, sometimes I am obsessive in if I, have a goal in mind i need to know something so if i if i buy a vehicle and i'm planning on keeping that vehicle i'm mm -hmm. going to almost take that vehicle apart nose to tail before i put my family in it and drive it just because yeah. i like to know it and i'm way over analytical about it um but well you can never be too safe when it comes to family no absolutely not and and not like that but it's just for my knowledge and i've never broke down on the side of the road ever not going what away. that's awesome uh, Never broke down on the side of the road, never got a flat tire, but it's like, if I ever do, I know that vehicle on the side of the road and I bring tools wherever I go and I can rip it apart and rebuild whatever I need to rebuild on the roadside yeah. if I need to. So it's, it, I am obsessive when it comes to that kind of stuff. And I, I love knowing how machines work and uh, machines and motors are my passion. Allison six speed automatic transmission. Fantastic. Wonderful. Um, I just saw the comment. What do you think of the Allison six speed transmission? Um, one of my favorites. Allison is a known name in the industry. Um, they're great. The only thing I would say that's the downfall is what is in front of the Allison transmission usually. So uh, if it's in front, if it's behind a Cummins, it's great. Um, Duramax is depending on the year. If it's a Duramax engine that you're speaking of, there's certain years that are really, really awesome. And I would trust them. I would own one. I'd buy one. Then there's other ones that I won't even work on. Oh, Okay. Well, when you uh, do your next big project, make sure you give me a heads up and, and we can get you up here and talk about it again, maybe then. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and I, I definitely would love to have a follow-up because there's the one of the clients that I'm actually working with right now, uh, the lady that I went up and visited the ambulance in Philadelphia for, as soon as we find her one, we're going to be doing a, um, a build for her. And so okay. I don't know if she's going to want to document that, but I'll definitely get on board with her and see if she's going to want to document it or, and, and show the progress of it and things. I don't know if I'm going to do the full build out. I don't know exactly what she's going to need. We need to land on a vehicle first, but um, there's going to be some of my involvement in that. So I'll see if we can maybe team up. Mm -hmm. uh, gas motor. What motor is it? The eight one, 8.1 liter or six O. Oh. There's my wife again. Big head. Man, I'm not going to be able to leave. I, I, I got to widen my doors with the big head my wife's giving me. My wife, I'll tell you guys, my wife is my biggest support system. I wish she was. She needs to be in here with me. Um, my wife's awesome. She is absolutely the apple of my eye and is supportive through everything. And like I said, I have some harebrained ideas. Um, and she rides with it and she never questions it. It's awesome. Love that partnership. You know what, to anybody watching that's um, been timed out, your wife's comment, this one actually was timed out by my stream elements, and I don't know what in there did it. Maybe it was because so many numbers. I'm going to have to check some stuff on there, but because it came up here, I could still show it. So I guess I'm going to have to watch chat a lot more closely than I thought I was. So sorry about that, Mallory, but we got it up there. Yeah. I'm learning. Yeah, no, I my big thing is, is longevity in all my vehicles. I, if I insure something and put it in my name and get a title on it, that vehicle is going to be with me for a long time. It's kind of like animals at our farm. Um, 6.0 motor 
I'll interrupt. 6.0 motor is a great motor. Allison transmission and a 6.0, poof, yep. Fantastic. Okay. Good setup. See, and I can post that that someone's giving you that information. You know what they're referring to, and I'm like, do 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 do. <laughs> so people like me that need people like you, John. <laughs> yep. No, that, that's all. That's all my lingo. That's uh, yeah. That's that's in my wheelhouse. No, six O and an Allison transmission, absolutely. Um, and we were talking about long longevity. I anything that I buy, I my goal is to make that thing to a half a million miles. I want to get my money's worth and I want something that is stout. I, and we always yes. kind of have this thing. If my vehicle can't, I can't hop into any one of my vehicles at any point in time and make an 1100 mile road trip. I don't want it in my driveway. Makes sense. So uh, longevity is huge with me. Um, every vehicle I have is almost, well, I got a 300,000 and almost 300,000, a 250, no, excuse me, 200, 150, and 164. So like all mine are high mileage and they're going to be high mileage. I'm, I'm going to get my use out of them and I will always, always pick the better of the, I, I look for stuff, 4.7 Toyotas. I look for the um, 7.3 liter diesels. I look for the 5.9 liter Cummins. I look for reliable, tried and true. People have already beat the crap out of these things for 20 years. Mm -hmm. and they're yeah. So yeah. Those are awesome. And six O's. I, I want to go back to six O's. I don't, I'm not going to be one of those guys that dog six O's. Six O's are a great motor. They make more power than a seven, three out of the box, out of the factory. They are powerful, powerful beings. The problem is, is about 25% of them fail. And when they fail, they fail catastrophically. And I may even be shy on the 25%. It may be closer to 50%. But oh, wow. When they fail, they fail, but there's, there's ones that are good. I, I mean, I know several people that have 6.0s that have 250,000 miles on them and they've never done anything but change the oil, change the coolant, and maybe change injectors. Huh. So there's another question posted for you. Oh, and just before we had van life, the Gina pop in. She's another person with a step van. So we've had quite a few step van um, people coming up into this stream today. So, you know, if you ever do get any more information on that too, you know, maybe we could do another one too. Yeah, no, I, I, I know a good amount about step vans. I know just from working on them, I've, you know, done kingpins and ball joints and stuff like that and done some transmission work and rear end work on them and suspension. Okay. Work. So I, know, I know the underside of them pretty well. I've, as far as converting, I've never been behind the walls. And that was one of the first questions I asked him, what's, what's behind there? How much gapping? we yeah. got? I, I guess that's always my question is I want the four walls and the, the floors to make sure that they're good first. So um, I'm going to get more educated on that. I'm, I, I, sometimes I go to junkyards just to look at vehicles and see how they're constructed after they're crushed. So, uh, mm -hmm. if I find a step van at a junkyard, I'm going to look and see how that thing tears apart. That's awesome. That is so awesome. So, um, I'm thinking maybe this would be our last question before we wrap up or yeah, that's no, absolutely. Good? That sounds good. Okay. Yeah. So do you use synthetic oil or conventional? Synthetic, 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 synthetic. For every motor, every every motor, and I'll tell you why. Um, they they're making synthetic oil better than conventional oil ever was. Any vehicle can run synthetic. A lot of people think, oh, as soon as I go synthetic, it just changes synthetic oil and everything. It's a better oil, and there's three reasons why it's better. It's better for you. It's better for the vehicle, and it's better for the environment. Reason why is because it's better for the vehicle because it's a quality oil. They all it has to pass certain tests. It's a great great oil. It's better for you because you don't have to change it as often. You've got to change conventional oil every 3,000. Synthetic oil, you can go up to seven, sometimes even 10,000, depending on the oil that you're using. And it's yeah. better for the environment because you're not recycling in a diesel 15 quarts of oil every time you drive 3,000 miles. So in my opinion, synthetic is the way to go, 100%. It's, I've seen thermal breakdown tests. Um, I see your question come in about AMS oil. No. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of money. Okay, so, what is that? Is that like my Arc Oil stuff I bought? Ams Oil is like a, it, they're a company. Um, they make oil and they do make great products. They do make great oil. Um, oh, that's a, a brand of oil. Correct. Yeah, it's okay. like a, you have to franchise. So they have dealers that deal out Ams Oil. And uh, I've used Ams Oil in a couple things. I used it in Harley. Um, I used it in, I think I had a performance. I had a Mercedes that I also used uh, Ams Oil in. And okay. 
I had nothing but low oil pressure. I had nothing but leaks popping up. So I quit using AMSOIL. The best product out there, in my opinion, for diesels, gas, anything is Rotella oil. Um, Shell makes it. Shell Rotella oil. I put Shell Rotella oil in every vehicle that's out in my driveway. Um, I use a 15W40 or 15W30 for all of my gas vehicles, and I use a 15W40 for all of my diesel vehicles. Um, I even use Rotel 1540 in my four-wheelers crankcase. So oh. it is tried and true. It's a tough oil. I know a lot of guys will say, oh, no, 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 I, I've heard this and that. You may have heard what you heard on forums, but I've been under cars. I've drained oil out of countless thousands of cars. And I can tell you, Rotel oil is the best oil out on the market right now as far as longevity, lubricity, and quality. The, the detergents wow. are in them are not too harsh and they are very, very sturdy oil. And I will say as regarding to an oil conversation, another thing about oil, make sure you're using a factory filter. So if your vehicle is a Ford E450 like yours is, I would use a Motorcraft filter. If it's a, I, go sorry. ahead. I, I actually took it to our Ford dealer to do the oil change. So should I not have to worry probably or? M more, I, more I don't know to ask that stuff. My goodness. Yeah, I would say most of the time, if you take yours to the Ford dealership, they're going to use a Motorcraft filter just because they get they get those relatively cheap. And Motorcraft is Ford's brand. Um, but like when I, most of my oil I do myself, obviously. So I go to Walmart and I buy it or I buy the filter off of Amazon or whatever. But um, if it's a Dodge, I use a Dodge filter, a Mopar filter. If it's a Toyota, I use a Toyota filter. The reason I do that is because the engineers, when they designed your engine, they designed your engine to operate with the oil pressure and the oil filtration system of that filter. So okay. any filter that you use outside of that filter could have restrictions or could have overage of flow in any point of the areas because it's constructed and designed differently. So I always go back with what the engineers tested, tried, and true the mm -hmm. engines on, which is the factory oil filter. So that's, that's – I won't preach about oil too much, but that's – Rotel oil and everything that I own and factory filters on everything that I own. Okay. Now this brought to my mind another question and it was on one of the ambulance forums and stuff. I was looking about additives having a diesel engine because I'm completely unfamiliar with having a diesel vehicle. So sure. I looked up um, this company called Dirty Diesel in British Columbia. They, they uh, will actually ship free shipping some of this stuff and I ordered some Arc, Arc Oil products, something that's an oil additive, but my oil change is already done, so I haven't had a chance. I'll have to wait till the next oil change, I guess, to have them put it in. But I also got um, something for the for in the actual diesel tank, and oh my god, I was like, I I should be using something in there all the time. I I had no idea. My vehicle got so much quieter. I, yes. like, I could have a good conversation with the person in the next seat now. And I, I almost thought I was imagining it. Yeah, no, I, I will say fuel, fuel is a big thing. And the quality of diesel over the last five to 10 years has gone down considerably. We have oh. in our, in our pumps right now, at least in the United States, I don't know about Canada. I'm, a, I'm sure Canada is probably the same because the supply chain runs north. Yeah. So you guys probably have the same diesel we do, but our diesel is dirty. I mean, it is dirty, dirty diesel. So filters are huge and additives are huge. Every fill up in every single one of my diesels, I use a uh, what's called House Diesel Lubricant, H-O-W-E-S. Um, and it's just an additive you pour in. It treats, you know, like a whole bottle treats 320 gallons. So you only need like four to eight ounces of it at a time. Um, I use that every time. It increases injector lives. It lowers uh, combustion temperatures. It also, you know, good for injector pumps. All good for fuel components. It makes sure there's no water, no rust, no nothing in the components of the fuel system. So all the diesels I run house diesel oil. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful for the uh, uh, fuel. Uh, as far as Arch Oil, I know a lot of people that use it. I know a lot of people that liked it. Um, I can't say that I've ever used it personally, but I can't say that I've ever not wanted to. Okay. Because I've, I've seen the studies on it and I believe the studies on it. Um, I, I think it's probably a good product. For sure. And I've, I've seen people, they'll add it into a diesel and have a water cup sit and vibrating. And then when they add it into the oil and let it circulate, the vibrations a lot less. And diesels do have a lot of, lot of engine vibration. So any yeah. amount of chatter that you can calm down in the crankcase, fantastic. As long as oil pressure does not suffer. 
So is there anything else that a person should like, okay, you know, I have a diesel. So is there anything else that I should be adding to the oil, to the fuel, to like, for um, maintenance wise? Fuel, you know, like I said, a, a good house diesel lubricant, uh, diesel clean. Um, What's diesel clean? Diesel clean is the same thing as kind of house. It's not an oil based. It's more of a petroleum based. So I don't, I don't necessarily like it as much. Um, it increases horsepower. If I ever have an issue like water in the fuel, the first thing I'll do is I'll get a thing of diesel 911, which is made by diesel clean. Um, okay. That stuff works really well for removing moisture. But day to day, I use house. Um, and I'll tell you kind of the old school method. And I know a lot of people are going to be like, man, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. I know what I'm talking about. Google it. Um, <laughs> transmission fluid. If you add a quart of transmission fluid into a full diesel tank. So if you have, let's say you have a 30 gallon tank, pour a half a quart to a full quart of transmission fluid into the tank, automatic transmission fluid. And it is fantastic for your injectors and it cleans it out. It, there's a lot of detergents and it burns just like diesel because diesel is kind of slippery anyway. And transmission fluid is very, very thin. Mixing it into 30 gallons isn't bad. As a matter of fact, when I do my trans or when I do my fuel filter changes, I actually take the fuel filter out siphon all the leftover diesel in it, pour a thing of transmission fluid in the fuel filter, screw the fuel filter back on and crank it up. And that actually is like a, a quick clean for the entire engine because you're getting a half a quarter transmission fluid just forced into the injectors. Wow. And yep. so how often do you change your fuel filters? Like mine, I have one under the hood and then one underneath kind of the, the seat to the driver's side, right? I do mine um, every other oil change. So about every okay. 10,000 miles. Um, okay. yeah. On a 6.0, I think realistically uh, 20 to 30,000 miles. And I, I hesitate saying that. That's what the dealership recommends. I'm going to say it. I think it needs to be changed every 15, in my opinion, with okay. the quality of diesel. And especially being up there in the winters, I'm sure it gets cold. Diesel fuel is going to gel. Yeah. I think that you should probably change it every 15. Good to know. Yep. Man, you know, every time I think I'm going to let you go and have some <laughs> supper, I, uh, me or people in the chat keep coming up with all these questions for you. I could probably keep you here all night. I'm not going to do that. Um, and your wife says, thank you so much for having John on. We're so proud of him and the knowledge that he has. And our daughter and I have enjoyed the live feed. And so, you know, with that... I yep. think I'm going to wrap this up again. Thank you so much, John. This no, is just meant no. to the world, the world to me. Me as well. I, I, I really enjoyed this. I, I just looked up at the timer and we're at a hundred or excuse me, we're at an hour and 53 minutes and you and I talked I 30 minutes before that. So we've been chatting for almost two and a half hours and it doesn't feel like it. So I, I really I know. appreciate the opportunity. This is great. Thanks so much. I'll let you, you go have some supper. Thank you so much. We'll see you guys later. Yeah. And any questions you guys have, please reach out to me. I'm happy to answer any questions. Great. Well, you guys, that was so awesome. I want to thank everyone that popped in on this live feed. I hope you guys got as much out of meeting John as I did. In fact, some of you got a lot more because you understood a little bit more what <laughs> he's about. But this is the kind of stuff that I want to provide for you guys on the channel. I want to show you guys what is real? What are we really dealing with? What what are tips that different types of people in different situations have come across? So over time, this channel is going to be about my travels, but I want it to be connected to anything related to anybody's travels. I want you all to be safe. I want you to all to be well. Much love. I'll see you again tomorrow. I have a Canadian van lifer coming on, Timothy Keller Van Dweller. He lives in British Columbia. And on Friday, I have another Canadian and his name is Badge. Everyone needs one. And I'll tell you that couldn't be more true. So I look forward to seeing you guys. Have a great day.